I was interested in learning how Bitcoin works. And I thought a good way to learn would be to build a Bitcoin miner from scratch. And since I'm an FPGA engineer, I decided to build an FPGA Bitcoin miner. And I'm going to show you how it works. So here it is running right now at 40 mega hashes per second. And I have a repository with all my code that's in a link in the description. So let's get right into it. If you're not familiar with FPGAs, FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, and it's a chip you can program to do arbitrary digital logic operations. So unlike a software program, which is instructions for CPU to execute, when you program an FPGA, you're reconfiguring the hardware inside the device, hardware like logic gates, flip-flops, adders, etc. Next I want to talk about Bitcoin mining at a high level. So Bitcoin mining is the process by which new blocks of transactions are added to the blockchain. When a block has been added, that basically means the transactions have settled. Each of these blocks of transactions has a block header, which contains metadata about that block and the transactions themselves. To add a block to the blockchain, a miner must construct a block header such that the double SHA-256 hash of the block header produces a result that is less than some threshold. If you don't know what a hash function is, it's basically a function that maps an input to an output in a deterministic but seemingly random way. And it's also a one-way operation, so you can't easily get from the output to the input that produced that hash. A block header has a number of fields. The version of the block, the hash of the previous block header, the Merkle root, which is a hash of all the transactions in the block, the Unix time that the block was hashed, the bits field is an encoding of the target threshold for the hash, and the nonce. Miners can modify the nonce field of the block header to produce different hash inputs in order to find a hash output less than the threshold. For finding a valid block, a miner is rewarded with new Bitcoin. Since finding a block header with a hash less than the threshold is so difficult, miners typically join together in mining pools and agree to split the block reward if one of the miners in the pool finds a valid block. Now let's take a look at my Bitcoin miner in more detail. The hardware platform I'm using is a pink Z2 board from Technology Unlimited. It has lots of features, but the important ones for the miner are the Gigabit Ethernet module and Zinc 7020 SoC, which has a dual core ARM processor and programmable logic equivalent to the Xilinx Arctic 7 FPGA. The processor runs a mining client which requests a job from the mining pool server. The server replies with the job, and then the processor creates the block header, configures the FPGA registers, and sends the FPGA the block header to hash. The FPGA does the double SHA-256 hashing and trying different nonce values. If it finds a valid nonce, it alerts the mining client, which submits it to the mining pool server. Zooming into the FPGA implementation in more detail, there is an AXI bus, so the processor can read and write FPGA registers to communicate with it. The 125 MHz Ethernet clock goes into a PLL and creates an 80 MHz clock for the hashing core, which does the double SHA-256 hash and returns a valid nonce to the registers. If you aren't familiar with the SHA-256 algorithm, you might not be able to follow all the details I'm about to go over, but there are plenty of resources online for you to learn. SHA-256 operates on 512-bit message blocks, and the block header is 640 bits, so it's padded out to 1024 bits, comprising two 512-bit message blocks. The hash of the first message block 
won't change when we increment the nonce, because the nonce is on the second 512-bit message block. So I do the first message block hash in the processor, and I call this hash the mid state because it's the state of the SHA-256 state registers halfway through the first hash. The mid state is sent to the FPGA over the register bus, along with the leftover block header data from the second message block and the target value for the hash output. The hashing core, which is the SHA-256 wrapper in the code, has two SHA-256 transform blocks. The first one uses the mid state and hashes the second message block and the second one does the second hash with the output from the first SHA-256 transform. Each SHA-256 transform has a synthesis time configurable number of what I call digesters in the code. Each digester does one round of message schedule and state register updating in the SHA-256 algorithm. Configuring the number of digesters controls how pipeline the design is. More digesters gives you a faster hash rate at the cost of consuming more FPGA resources, while using fewer digesters gives you a slower, smaller hashing core. In the case of a single digester, it takes 64 cycles to compute an output because there are 64 rounds of message schedule and state register updates in the SHA-256 algorithm. With two digesters, they split the work and each one performs 32 rounds before passing the result on to the next digester. So a new SHA-256 output is computed every 32 cycles. You can continue this pattern for 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 digesters. With 64, a new output is computed every clock cycle. My design uses 32 digesters due to resource limitations. So an output every other clock cycle, at a clock rate of 80 MHz, gives a hash rate of 40 megahashes per second, which is what we saw in the beginning of this video. So that's the end of my explanation of the Bitcoin miner. Hopefully it was at least mildly interesting. Thanks for watching.